Have you ever wondered which is the most expensive coin ever sold? This is called the flowing hair dollar. It was the first dollar issued by the United States federal government. It was minted in 1794. It was sold in New York two years back in 2013 for a whopping amount of 62 and a half crore rupee. Isn't it amusing? The question here is, what makes a metal a coin? Over the centuries, coin designs varied considerably in beauty and complexity. The first coins had crude designs. Eventually, coins of great artistic beauty came into existence in Greece and then in Rome. Traditionally, the value of coin was determined by the intrinsic value of its component metal. However, the scenario changed in the modern times. The study of coins helps us to understand the reason behind the invention of coins and its rich cultural, political and economic background. India has been one of the earliest issuers of coins in the world. Few countries rival India for the sheer diversity of its coinage, be its varieties, scripts, motifs, sizes, shapes, metals, minting techniques or for that matter experiments with monetary standards. In history, Indian coins have played a crucial role in documenting political and economic changes over time. The earliest documented coins of India were the silver punch marked coins, which were issued around 6th century BC. The Indian government operates four mints in the country for the production of coins. The locations are Mumbai, Kolkata, Hyderabad and Noida. some points in circulation different than what we found in, mm. in Bombay, mm. what we handled in Bombay. Yeah. So it always attracted my mind, what is this coin, why they are not available in Bombay, yeah. why we are different coins. Yeah. Then even in school trip, I went to, particularly in Sri Lanka, you know, I went to Gwalior. Yeah. And there I saw absolutely different coins, yeah. not even as Rajasthan, yeah. in different points of copper, very big in size, okay. very old, very worn out, yeah. with a different thing's name. Yeah. Again, I was surprised. What I did is, I exchanged some of the coins yeah. with a beggar. Yeah. He got some old coins yeah. while he was begging, yeah. and they were spread on the footpath on the cloth. I exchanged it. Yeah. You know, as a child, a child, small child collects everything. Every child, even you must have collected everything. We collect pencil, we collect stone pieces, we collect anything we want. After a few days, we leave it. Collect something else. After it, again we leave. Collect unless we arrive at a certain fix. It, it will take it take some time. Why so started collecting points? Whatever comes in my hand, I will collect. Yeah. I collected Urdu coins. Yeah. Cannot read it. I never try to study Urdu. Never try to read it. I collected British India coins. Yeah. They can be read. Then when the when I found different, then I started checking. You know, what is the difference? Collecting different different coins. king or the ruling person, the ruling government or will issue the coin yeah. with their marking to show their prominence in that particular area, yeah. to express their popularity, yeah. to enable us to know their history. Yeah. Now, as far as 
aspect is concerned uh, as a coin collector i was more interested in collecting parts then i got more interested later on in my college days uh, in the research part what what are these coins who issued them how they were minted and all those things so i started reading about those coins i started writing about uh, some new discoveries and all those things so slowly i came into the research part of coins so we have regular uh, Uh, lectures seminars and we also have a uh, uh, thing called coin festival so we have been doing this for uh, a long time so it includes this kind of uh, trade fair where it, all the aspects of hemispheric science are involved like academics uh, training then business auctions and everything Trouble, because uh, like any other things, uh, even coins are uh, counterfeited or forged. Earlier, uh, if you read Arthashastra, Chalu, uh, Kautilya's uh, Arthashastra book, even at that time, some 2,400 years ago, he was he has mentioned that how to identify fake coins and how how to identify persons who are faking or making these coins. So, fake coins are continuously uh, uh, manufactured for last 2,000 years. Even the today uh, thing is slightly changed now. Earlier people were uh, counterfeiting coins which were in current or uh, currency coins, but now there are people who are counterfeiting these coins to cheat the coin collectors. The main uh, thing to identify a big coin from a co genuine coin. is a minting technique how the coins are manufactured because if a coin is manufactured 2000 years ago the system they had at that time we they won't have at the same system right now started collecting uh library material coin documentation material etc and then finally in 1984 this institute was inaugurated at this location in anjaneri uh the site was selected because uh it was quite peaceful for and uh uh good for carrying out research and initially the focus uh, of the institute was to collect the resource material for research scholars because normally what happens is that coins are kept in museums or private collectors hands where the excess for an ordinary researcher is uh, very difficult Normally, the museum personnel would not give you sufficient time, or they would not grant you permission at all. So the idea was that if we, as an institution, take permission, document those coins photographically, and keep it in the form of coin uh, photographs, documented, mounted on a card with relevant details, whereby. an ordinary researcher can access material from different places sitting at this place this is supposed to be one of the best libraries in the world on indian mathematics but the thing is that the study of coins is not an isolated subject it's basically part of history so in the library we make an effort to develop literature on the allied subjects in Geography, archaeology, history, source books, etc. And it's it, the library now has a holding of about thirty thousand books and periodicals, journals, etc. 
there are some scholars who has worked on uh, uh, mathematics and their uh, academic correspondence have been kept here. Private, no, no, private. This is the academic paper of P. L. Gupta. P. L. Gupta was a founder director of the Society. He was a Bisham Pitama. So these all are paper related with his academic activity and all that. Similarly, uh, K. K. Maheshwari, who is the founder of this institute, and he is the uh, chairman of this institute. First of all, uh, there are certain kinds of uh, chiefs like Tantric Babas. Uh, they lure people uh, with uh, certain kind of coins which are not exist in existence. There, there are some certain coins called RP coins. So what is RP coin? It says a rice pulling coin. So if you have a coin and keep it near a uh, rice, it will pull the rice. Such a thing never exists. Today if you buy coins, even for collection, if you spend one lakh over there, after a few years, it will increase much more than what it will increase in form of interest. If you make a fixed deposit today, or instead you collect coins today, your coins will have much more appreciation than before. That is my experience. It is not for me granted, but today what is the trend? Now, there were coins for family planning. There, when you go to the Reserve Bank side, Mint side, Bombay Mint side, you will find one new thing every year. Every year. Grow more food. There was a thing, grow more food. When there was shortage of food in India. In 1969, 70, there was a shortage of food there. So they issued point of view like grow more. The British lion attacking the Tiger, this is Tiger means Tipu Sultan. Gold coins they have issued in very limited quantity. It is an exceedingly rare medal of the Tipu Sultan. Issued by Britishers. Yeah. This, this is the coin of Kushan dynasty. Yeah. Coin of Akbar yeah. struck at Bang in Bengal. Yeah. I got about 100, 125 books on coins. In the market you will not find hardly 5 or 10 books today, but I got 125 books and I have asked for another nearly 17, 18 books from the Nasik Institute. They are going to put up a stall with them. They had these dotting system so that people couldn't file down and uh, reduce the weight. You find special in silver coins and all, yeah. Assam coins also, you find all dots all yeah. the, everywhere. Yeah. Because for the simple reason that since denomination was never written the coins, people, nobody could uh, put up a file and uh, reduce the weightage of the coins. This is Bala Rama Varma third. DVR. Now Travancore coins are so costly today. India coin 1950. <laughs> 1950 में पहला पाइन निकला था वो कौन सा मेटल था वो ब्रांस था और निकल था आजादी के पहले फुल सिल्वर था हां मतलब अंग्रेज आने के बाद 1939 तक फुल सिल्वर था 1940 में हाफ सिल्वर किया 1942 46 45 तक हाफ सिल्वर था उसके बाद में निकल गया तो वो देखने का अभी का देखने का
कोई यहाँ के खाली सुपरा नहीं थे सबसे अच्छी चीज मुंबई में आई सबसे लास्ट मुंबई में आ गई ऑप्शन रहने के बाद सब बंद हो गया तो मुझे उन्होंने हाथ में चला गया दुनिया में सबसे अच्छे रोमन सिटी हिंदुस्तान में मिले कहीं नहीं मिले सबसे बढ़िया सिटी हिंदुस्तान में मिले इतना ट्रेड था पाँच सौ छः सौ साल पहले गया ना पाए दो हज़ार साल पहले इतना ट्रेड था कि रेगुलर जहाज जाते थे जहाज जाते थे जैसे पेपर कैसे हिंदी और कहीं आता है जैसे रेगुलर किस जहाज जाते थे किसी जहाज जाते थे तो जो भी इन्फॉर्मेशन वहाँ चेंजिंग होता था वो यहाँ अफेक्ट होता था कि रोमन सिटे इतने थे वही सर्कुलेशन में थे वही अपने यहाँ चलते थे रोमन सिटे तो प्योरिटी स्टैंडर्ड रेट रेट सब क्विट और सब एक्सपोर्ट करते थे इनको कुछ था ही नहीं इंडिया और एक जमाना था कि ये रोमन लोग यहाँ आके नौकरी भी करते थे अच्छा। अपने यहाँ सातवान हो गए नौकरी भी करते थे ये और यहाँ से जाते थे लोग बोलते वो ऐसे अमेरिका कैसे आदमी आता है कमा के आया था यही एक सबूत है पक्का ये जमीन में बैंक है जैसे दूसरी बॉल्ट है सब इसके अंदर है सब जमीन में है पड़ा हुआ अब जहाँ भी निकालो तो फोटो निकलेगा तो वो तो प्रूफ है उसमें डेट तारीख उसी का इकोनॉमिक कंडीशन आदमी कैसे कपड़े पहनता था क्या रहता था उसको वो संपन्न था थी या पैसा था या I saw so many collectors in this field, and lot many people who are just in search of such types of coins of India, having a very big history mm -hmm. about a two two and a half thousand year old coins mm -hmm. we found we find in India. Mm -hmm. So when I started uh, making friends and collectors and interact with clubs, and there are so many societies which I never knew that mm -hmm. they were coin societies. So then I found many. People who were in need of uh, old coins. So when I used to travel a lot, I found many coins, and you know? also when I have an extra coin, so I used to sell them, and that's how I started my business. So we have started a platform of an auction house, so that if you have coins, you can sell through our auctions legally. Okay. We have an antique license to uh, deal in old coins, okay. so you can sell your coins through our auctions and get the right price. And the best part is that the Yeah. I think we are one of the topmost numismatic dealer in the country. We are doing our auctions like we started our first auction in 1989 at Nagpur. Now was our 95th auction in the auction series. Plus we did six budget auctions. We were the first auctioneer in India. Today there may be few men, others, and we have been doing auctions not only in Bombay but everywhere in India. For to trade in anything hundred years old, that's called an antiquity. So, in, as per the Indian laws, you require an antiquity license. You need to go through many. Uh, legal uh, offices of uh, Indian government, and from them you get an NOC from about 30 different uh, departments. And then only you get an uh, license. Right now in India, India there are about eight auctioneers all over India, and all of them are doing very well. And they, as an auction house, we just act as a commission agent. Now, if you have your coin, we sell it on your behalf, and we charge the commission. The same way, the people who buy it pay the charges of commission.
We do six, seven, maybe eight auctions per year in the different part of the country. Two, three auctions in Mumbai and the various part like we had an auction in Kochi, Kolkata, Shimoga, Nagpur, various part of the country, Kolkata. There was an auction in Kota and we sold first known gold medal of Bharatpur. It was estimated at 4 lakhs and we sold it at 7 lakhs 20,000. So that is one of the rare coins we have sold. But uh, of course we have sold so many historically important coins. The value is not important. See? Mm -hmm. 2,000 rupees coin also is having a great historical importance and maybe 5 lakh rupees coin is not having any historical importance. Some coins in my second auction were sold in 8, eight lakhs, 9 lakhs. Under 100 crore, very less than compared to the foreign countries. See, it depends on the auction. Since last two auctions which I did, this was about 2.5 crores. So, more and more coins in the auction and the bigger your turnovers. Government in other countries support quite a lot. Even government supports in other countries for forgeries and all that. Here there is nothing as such. Today there are very few collectors overseas uh, who wants to collect Indian coins. And particularly coins such as more rarities needs to come back to India. But there is no cooperation from the government. In fact, a person would like to bring back his Indian, Indian heritage back to India, Indian coins, would be penalized, fined. With the uh, spread of art and uh, collectibles uh, throughout the world, even India is awakened with all these things. So we must popularize mysteries uh, in three aspects. First is the hobby part, secondly is the academic part, and secondly the third aspect is the professionalism or the uh, business part. Very, very small, very small. Uh, compared to the Europe and USA, we are nothing. In US, in Europe, you will find the countries having a 300-year-old auction house is there. Uh, in India, I am I'm one of the founding member of the India's first numismatic auction house. We have started that company in 2003-04. So it is just 10 years old business. The country of 125 crores and the coinage of 2,500 crores. We have only seven to eight auction houses. They are doing the auctions in India. And I think this is a very, it is just starting. Uh, if we compare it to what's there in the West, like UK, Germany or US, we are just not even 1% of them. In every uh, every uh, city in the US, there is a coin club, which we don't have. Hardly, we have got even a dozen uh, uh, clubs in the whole of this uh, country here. So the turnover wise, uh, it's nothing. Since now the market is open through websites, you get thousands of collectors who buy and invest in all these things. Cultural Ministry, Educational Ministry, Commerce Ministry, Customs, Finance Ministry, if all of them get together, 
we can build a very beautiful numismatic culture for the next coming generation. As it grows older, it becomes more valuable. We collect coins, preserve coins, take care of coins, and in future, coins will take care of you.